All right. So, do you have some goats to get? Oh, we, we have the, we've started already? No. Oh, okay. Now we have. Uh, no. No, okay. I'm, I'm happy today. All right. Well, I guess that's our show for today then, folks. Thanks for listening. Wait, wait. What about you? Do you have anything that you're goat getting? <laughs> wait, uh, okay. Welcome to That Gets My Goat. Isn't that what we're calling it? I guess. Wait, you, you still have doubt? What, what would you like to call it? No, goat getting is good. Thank you, Solomon Grundy. <laughs> I'm Rish Outfield. I'm Big Anglovich. This is a podcast that we do just to vent, just to talk about whatever happens to be on our mind. Uh, I don't suppose it has to be things that we're upset about. It doesn't have to, no, but it is. Okay, cool. You want me to go first? I. Well, you're the angry Rish Outfield, so. Not so far today. <laughs> I just figured that that's just kind of the format. Angry Rish Outfield gets angry. Mr. McGee, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Oh, somebody said that my voice when I do narration sounds like Alec Baldwin. Uh Uh-huh. And I don't know that I've ever done an Alec Baldwin impression before. But it seems that he talks like this for no reason. What do you think? I don't know. I don't see a lot of Alec. I mean, I, my kids did have the Thomas the Train feature film, which included Alec Baldwin as Mr. Conductor. Dear God. A- at the local theater in L.A., they had one of those giant cardboard standees of that. And I remember seeing Alec Baldwin. And he's got the whistle in his mouth, and he's got the rosy cheeks that they'd painted <laughs> on to him and the little cap. And, oh, it was embarrassing. How could something like that have been made? And what was, was your theory at the time? I can't uh, I'm pretty sure that the uh, producers of that film had some meh, compromising pictures of Alec Baldwin. I'm not sure what they involved, but I'm pretty sure they uh, had a little manila envelope and they invited him into their office, which was probably a really seedy office, I'd say, on the, on the wrong side of the tracks. And they said, hey, listen, either you're Mr. Conductor in the new Thomas the Tank Engine movie. (laughs) Or these will be in all the tabloids. And even the USA Today. It was was a pretty embarrassingly bad movie. It's one of those movies only a kid could like because the plot, not the character, the characters were stupid and etc. But the plot is so freaking convoluted. It doesn't make any sense when it's over. You watch it and it's like, uh, did they win then? I don't, that was... I confused. That didn't get my goat so much this week. Oh, hasn't yeah. gotten my goat in months, uh, years even actually, because the last time we watched it was a while ago. Luckily for us. Well, that reminds me of of something I wanted to goat get today. Okay, it's just uh, that's an odd saying. <laughs> Somebody explain where that comes from, please. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about is. Uh, something that irritates the crap out of me uh-huh. is when someone will get offended on behalf of somebody else. Okay. And I, I mean, it happens all the time. There right. are these special interest groups that, you know, have to protest a movie or have to demand somebody's resignation, demand somebody to be fired on behalf of, of someone who can't defend themselves, you know, like, like black people or Jews or. People that can think and talk for themselves. And it's like, no, 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 no. And I I shouldn't have said black people and Jews in that way because somebody might say, oh, he's saying that black people and Jews can't defend themselves. I'm saying these special interest groups act as though who they're representing can't think for themselves or can't get up there and say, hey, I know he didn't mean anything when he said that. It just, you know, happened to be black, the shirt that he was wearing or whatever. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) I, am I digging myself in deeper here? You might be. I don't know. Somebody's going to get offended. Okay, but on if you... On behalf of the people that you've offended. There you go. I was going to say, if you get offended personally, that's okay. There's not anything I can do about that. But if your cousin somewhere might hear about this, and of course they won't hear it because this isn't even our real podcast, mm-hmm. which no one listens to anyway, that's what really gets my goat is just the, you know, it's like, well, I I wasn't personally bothered by it, but... This guy says that he might be able to get us money if we say that we were, you know, that it traumatized our kids or, or, or whatever the deal is. Anyway, I just, I hate that. I always hate these groups that have to find something 
offensive in something else. And, and well, I remember when Paramount was making Tropic Thunder. And of course, the big deal in that is Robert Downey Jr. is in blackface for the movie. Uh, he plays a white actor playing a black actor in a fake movie within the movie. And Paramount was worried, you know, that people were going to get the wrong impression by this. And so they held a bunch of test screenings in urban markets, asked members of the audience to stay afterward and ask them questions about what did you think about this and was this handled delicately and would you recommend this and, you know, were you bothered by it? And, and overwhelmingly, the people they showed it to said that it was funny, that they were fine with it. They knew that it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a minstrel show that the characters were all pointing at him and laughing at him or, or being outraged at him just for his, his own stupidity. And then, and then there was another African-American character who constant, you know, the guy that said, what do you mean, you people? That guy, you know, and all that stuff. And people got it. They were savvy enough to say, hey, this is a joke and it's pretty funny. And so Paramount was like, okay, well, we're going to be all right. You know, we're going to put a couple of disclaimers out and let people know and then we'll release it. And it, it looks like our bases are covered. And so they released it. And the outrage didn't come from the African-American community. It came from another corner of the world or, or of America. And my uncle, he and I tend to go to these movies together. And I said, hey, let's go see Tropic Thunder. I mean, it looks really, really good. And apparently there's a bunch of fake trailers at the beginning. They're going to be funny. And, and he's like, oh, my Down Syndrome organization has asked us not to see this movie. And I said, what, really? What, Tropic Thunder, why? And he said, well, they, they use the R word in the movie. And honestly, I had to think. I was like, R rectum? R robot? Rugby? Like fourth or fifth, suddenly I was like, oh, the R word. And I'd never heard that that word designation getting just a uh, a letter and i said oh well it, the movie i mean i i don't think i think it's a comedy i don't know that it's supposed and he's like well apparently some of the people on the board have heard from other people that have actually seen the movie and they've asked us not to go and i was like oh okay and that sort of bummed me out and, and you know maybe that makes me a bad person if if so i'm sure we'll hear about it but I did end up finally seeing the movie. And of all people, I saw it with my uncle. He, uh, by the time it got to the dollar theaters, had forgotten all about what his organization had said and just said, oh, I'd heard good things about this movie. And we went. And there was a part that made fun of the mentally handicapped. Challenge? Is, is that the most, P no, what is the most PC version of that? Just special? Maybe, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't keep up with the latest PC and non-PC <laughs> It terms. does get hard because Cause I don't, those things, you, you start using the PC term, and then people will turn the PC term into the slur, and then soon they'll need a new PC term to replace the old PC term. So That's true. It does get hard to keep up with at times. But yeah, there was a part where the, <laughs> he had done a movie where he played a mentally handicapped guy. I mean, it was sort. I think it was sort of mocking Forrest Gump and that kind of thing. Uh -huh. And he would run into people and they'd say, oh, you sure did good job in that retard movie. And so he didn't seem offended. My uncle didn't. But he is a little bit defensive about the word that bothers him is mongoloid. I, I actually learned that word from my dad. But I believe that's more of a scientific term. I, I can't help but laugh. I shouldn't laugh. Again, boy, why am I doing, why am I saying these potentially inflammatory things? I don't know. Gosh, okay, well, I will tie that up and not say anything more offensive or potentially offensive in this session. But I do have to admit that I am guilty. I have become what I most despise because recently somebody said something about you <laughs> on our podcast, and I got really, really upset on your behalf. Uh-huh. Because, you know, you have no arms and legs. You can't defend yourself. That's true. And so I was just, oh, so upset. And do you want to talk about that? Or maybe maybe you don't, but now, now you have <laughs> now to. Now I must. Um, if somebody links to our site, it will eventually show up on our little page that tells us that people have linked to our site. 
So sooner or later, you know, we'll we'll find. Some, it's like a newsreader or something like that. Yeah, something like that. I'm not sure exactly how it works. I'm not smart with technology and all that, but. You know, I'll click on these links just to see what they're about. And somebody had reviewed our one story that's up for the Parsec. Because I guess they're reviewing all the stories up for the Parsec. I, I don't know. And the guy, I think he gave us a 7 out of 10. He was fairly positive about the story. He, he didn't like as much our style of storytelling, I think. He didn't like us putting music or sound effects or things like that in. But he said that the guy that did the main character had a really great voice, was really gravelly and old man sounding, and very convincing. But the guy that played John Carter, well, that guy was well, yeah, his voice was kind of annoying. Well, you know, and I could I could handle that. <laughs> but the part that got my goat was just the old, the, the same old thing once again. What was it that was annoying about it? That guy who played John Carter's voice? Well, his voice sounded a lot like mm, Ernie on Sesame Street. Yeah, it's not the first time that I've been uh, accused of being a, a life-size Muppet. But yeah, apparently I, I sound just like Jim Henson. Yeah, it's funny because I drove all the way to New Orleans and said Muppet this and hit the guy right in the groin. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> and then he turned around and, and said, oh, yes, you, you do sound a lot like Jim Henson. You got all his voice, but none of his talent somehow. I did say that. <laughs> I keep because I love. <laughs> and I feel bad because I, gosh, this is a backhanded compliment if you've ever received one. I knew you in college and you were in such limited talent <laughs> when it came to acting. <laughs> It's just like, you just run the camera, sir. And Times. when a pretty girl walks by, you feel her up. Those are the two things that you can do, but do not act. And you've gotten so much better. And I, there are times when I was like, wow, you nailed that performance and stuff. And then to hear somebody say, you know, that you're Kermit the Frog. Uh, Hi-ho, Kermit the Frog here. See, that sounds nothing like him. <laughs> I, see, that's the thing. That's the worst part. I could try and sound like Jim Henson and then Rish could try and sound like Jim Henson and everybody would say that Rish was better. Nobody likes my Casey Kasem that I did the other day. Nobody likes my Wolfman Jack. I think people got on and begged me to never try and do those uh, impressions again. It's not easy being green. Oh, <laughs> you didn't think I would go oh. there. I, it was an accident. I was going to say it's not easy to do comedy. The famous saying, dying is easy, comedy is hard, because everybody's sense of humor is different, and there are some people that just have to be hit over the head for something to be funny, and then, you know, there's some of that subtle British humor, and, and everything in between, we try to be funny, but for the most part, most of these things aren't written down, it's just the two of us riffing off of each other and playing off, and sometimes I feel like now is the time for a sodomy joke, and... <laughs> 80% of the time, in retrospect, maybe that wasn't the right way to go, so we cut that out. But there may be three or four people that would have heard that joke and thought that was dang funny. There, there's no formula to it. So we are what we are, and if you think that we're funny, thank you. If not, again, geez, you've been listening, what, for 15 minutes. Hang up. Go get out of here. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is that that Jim Henson thing doesn't even really get my goat. It doesn't. As it were. I just think it's funny that it just keeps coming up and coming up. It's one of those things. That, it's like the line from Scream, you know? You, you can only hear that Richard Gere gerbil story so many times before you, you wonder if it's true. It's only so many people can compare me before it's just something I'm going to have to live with. I wonder if uh, Jim Henson's from the same region as you or... Because when Henson would speak normally, it sounded a little bit like Kermit, a little bit like Ernie, you know what I mean? So it's like, have you ever heard Frank Oz speak? I mean, that is Bert. <laughs> like, so when I was doing... Wait, wait, how does Bert talk? Bert, Bert was really low. Uh, uh, Ernie, uh, Ernie, 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 what are you doing? So you know, when I made a little shop of horrors, I... Uh, okay, that's Grover Monster. I, I don't know. <laughs> Trying to do Frank Oz not doing a character... That's hard. Forget about comedy. <laughs> Tell us the story of your diarrhea at the test. Wait, sorry, different story. No, the whole point I was trying to make is that I got offended on your behalf. Right. You were like, it's, a, it's not great that people say that. But I was just like, oh, damn them. 
yeah, it's just something that really, really bothers me when people do that. I'm re- there was this time at work. Just it's been years ago now, but at work people would and I've talked about how people were on the internet at work just in like the very first get my goat. People would just screw around and use the internet all day long. I mean, that's what the internet at work is for. The emails were just for forwarding funny jokes or videos or songs and all that back and forth to everybody else's cubicle. And one day, this dude sent everybody on our team an MPEG of, okay, ask the kids to leave the room, a woman having sex with a German shepherd, okay? It was a... Bestiality. Okay, there you go. I was trying to think of a more tasteful or, you know... uh, There's no tasteful way to speak of such a thing. So, yeah, it's just like, you've got mail, and everybody checked it because it's from somebody on our team. Oh, there's an attachment. And I think the the subject line, it was like, check this out! (laughs) Exclamation point, exclamation point one. That's when you know you should never check it out. And so, you know, I checked it out. And uh, Matt, the guy that was in the cubicle next to me, he he opened it, and I heard him go, whoa! And so I was like, okay, I'll check mine out. And I double-clicked on it, and suddenly this window opens on my work computer of this thing that, well, just the thought that somebody else might walk past and see me looking at that. I mean, I'm sure they all thought it was a freak show anyway, but wow, dude. That's not what you want to get fired for. <laughs> And Matt is still watching it because you can hear <laughs> on his computer. Gosh, I'm ill just thinking and, about it. And I would said, dude, Matt, is that your sister? And he laughed and I laughed. And a second later, the guy who had sent everybody on our team the email came to my cubicle and he says, dude, I heard what you said to Matt. That was not cool, man. I was like, what? So what you said about his sister, that was not cool. And I thought, well, you sent a pornographic depiction of sex with an animal to everybody on the team. And what I said was not cool. And he's like, no, 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 no. Everybody understands what I did was just for fun. And you didn't have to look at it. But what you said to Matt, that that was some hateful shit, man. You need to apologize. And I was like, what? No, I'm not going to apologize. And he said, do it. Do it. And, and Do it's like, it. He's, yeah, it was just some, one of those. He took it really personally, as if I had said it about his sister. And for some reason, when somebody tells you to apologize, <laughs> you become that 10-year-old kid or whatever. Apologize to your sister. I won't. I won't. And I was just like, well, I don't know if Matt even has a sister. And he's like, I don't care. And so he actually stood in the cubicle with me while I said, hey, Matt, you on a call? Hey, Matt, um, I'm sorry uh, if that wasn't cool what i said i mean i know it's not really your sister in the video and matt was like (laughs) my sister's dead man yeah that probably was my no i whatever he said it was he was totally cool with it and he thought it was funny and then uh, i guess apparently i was forgiven because i had apologized (laughs) and he went and sat down but i was just like wow that was the kettle calling the pot something i don't know because if anybody needed to apologize <laughs> it was a guy who had sent this it wasn't even questionable i i don't know what kind of job you work at uh, if you're listening to this but i mean you're probably looking around the cubicle saying oh just this description of what he got <laughs> sent i don't want anybody to hear that i got then sfw right and so yeah it's just I, I think there were different levels of wrong and his so outweighed mine but yet he was really offended for poor matt who again couldn't defend himself yes yes he didn't have his own mouth it had been sewn shut by the gimp <laughs> bring out the gimp let's quit on this i'm sure there will be legitimate things that we can get upset about next time thank you for listening yes well man jack hey you, the dude steve is released under a creative commons non-commercial no derivatives license that means you can not sell it or whatever the hell you want to do Arroo! you made it <laughs>